So we got a brand new front end emulation system known as Neo Station. This is literally brand new. It released just a few days ago as an alpha build. I tested this before this video and everything seems to be running just fine. So today we're going to set this up for you and we're going to add RetroArch and add your game files and BIOS files and generally just give you a run around how this system works. So like I was saying, it's pretty slick. So what we're going to do first of all is head over to the Neo Station website website and the links are going to be in the description for this we're going to go to the downloads tab and as we can see just here latest version alpha 0.0.17 which i was saying released just a few days ago we can see that various different platforms are supported with this front end we got android linux mac os ios and of course i'm going to be using windows for this guide today so we're going to download neo station and that should download in a zip folder what we're going to do with the zip folder is create a new folder on desktop so right click new New folder and call the folder Neo Station. And I'm going to get that zip folder I've just downloaded and drag and drop it into Neo Station. And I'm going to right click on the zip folder and I'm using WinRAR. You might be using 7zip or another extraction tool. Just right click and extract it. And there we go. Once everything's been extracted, we can then delete the zip folder. We no longer need that. And whilst we're in here, we're going to create a couple of new folders. If I right click new folder, I'm going to call this folder ROMs. I'm also going to create another folder inside of Neo Station. Right click new folder and I'm going to call this one emulators. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is go into the emulators folder. I'm then going to head over to the RetroArch website and download RetroArch. If we just scroll down, I'm going to download 64-bit. So what we're going to do is just left click on that one. I'm not going to use the installer copy. I'm just going to download this one just here and that's going to be fine. So what we're going to do with the RetroArch zip folder that I've just downloaded is just extract it. So again, I'm going to be using WinRAR for this and extract here. Okay, that's now been extracted. I'm going to delete the zip folder of RetroArch. And the RetroArch folder I've got, I'm then going to drag and drop it inside of the Neo Station emulators folder, which I created just a minute ago. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is go into RetroArch. I'm going to expand this Windows Explorer. And I'm going to open up RetroWatch just here because we're going to need to download a couple of cores. Don't let this freak you out. Just follow what I'm doing here and you'll be fine. Double left click RetroWatch.exe. Now at this point I've got an Xbox One controller connected and this is going to help me use RetroWatch or I could use the cursor keys on my keyboard and use the Z and X button in order to navigate. But like I'm saying, I'm using the Xbox controller. So first thing what we're going to do is just go down towards online updater. I'm going to press the A button on my Xbox controller. I'm going to press A on core downloader. And we're going to need to download some cores in order for Neo Station to run our games. So what I'm going to be doing with today's video is setting up Super Nintendo, Sega Mega Drive and PlayStation 1. So we're going to need some cores or I'm going to say micro emulators for those out there who's not too experienced with RetroArch. So using the D-pad or cursors on your keyboard, we're going to first of all look for Sega Mega Drive. So if we just scroll through the list, we're going to come across Sega and I'm going to specifically download Sega MS GG MD CD and in brackets Genesis plus GX. If I press A, as we can see, it says core installed. That's fine. I'm also going to download Pico Drive. If I press A, and core installed. Now, next one I'm going to download is something for Super Nintendo. So we got Nintendo section just here, as we can see, and I'm going to download a core for this. I'm going to download SNES 9X. I'm also going to try SNES 9X 2010. And finally, we got PlayStation. So I need to download a core for this. So I'm going to scroll towards Sony and I'm going to download Beetle PSX. I'm also going to check out Swan Station. So press A to download these. Now I'm going to press B on my Xbox controller to come out and B again. 
I'm then going to go up to main menu by pressing left on my D-pad, go down to settings, I'm going to head over to user interface by pressing right on my D-pad, down to video, I'm then going to go down to full screen mode, press A to select, and I'm going to press A on full screen display. Okay, we're now in full screen mode, I'm going to press B to come out, and B again, and I'm going to scroll to the left hand side, up to main menu, and if I press right on my D-pad, I'm going to go down to configuration file and press A. I'm going to press A on save current configuration and I'm going to press B to come out and I'm going to go down to quit. Okay, so we've now got RetroArch sorted out. So that means whenever we play our games within Neo Station, RetroArch in the background now has those RetroArch cores so we can actually play the games. Next thing we're going to do is drag and drop some games. Now, I created a ROMs folder just now. If we go inside of here, on my desktop, as we can see, I've got PS1 ROMs, Mega Drive ROMs, and SNES ROMs. If I drag and drop these folders inside of the Neo Station ROMs folder, okay. Now, we got a specific naming convention which needs to be used in Neo Station. So, these folders need to be named something specific in order for Neo Station to read them once we open it up. If we head back over to the Neo Station website, and if I go to Guide, now if we scroll down just a touch, under the ROMs folder structure, you can see the naming conventions just here. So, for example, my Mega Drive folder needs to be renamed as MD. So, if I just minimize this, go to my Mega Drive ROMs folder, right click, show more options, rename, and I'm going to rename this one to MD. Now, if you don't do this, Neo Station will refuse to see any of your games. So, this part is very important. If we go back over to the ROMs folder structure part of the website, we're going to find out what we need to call PlayStation games. And here we go. We got a whole list just here of what the folder names for the ROMs needs to be. So if we just scroll down, Sony Systems, PlayStation. So the ROMs folder for PlayStation needs to be PS1. If I come back out into my ROMs folder and rename this to PS1 in lowercase. And finally, we've also got SNES folder. So back over to the website and we're gonna find Super Nintendo. Here's Super Nintendo and the folder name needs to be SNES for this one. So just rename that folder again, and we're going to rename it to SNES. Okay, so we got a few more things to do before we open up Neo Station for the first time. What we're going to do first of all is head over to Screen Scraper. This is a free website, and this means once we open up Neo Station, we can actually download artwork known as scraping. Like I said, this is absolutely free and you can also pay a little bit extra in order to download more artwork as the free version of Screen Scraper, you get a quota. So what you need to do is just make sure you're logged into that and signed up. Next thing I do recommend doing to make this Neo Station front end a little bit more interesting is also sign up with Retro Achievements, which is going to give you little points and rewards for beating certain tasks within certain games. Well worth the effort. Okay. Okay, so once you've got the screen scraper login details and retro achievements, we're going to open up Neo Station for the first time. But we don't have a shortcut on the desktop. So I'm going to right click on neostation.exe. I'm going to go to show more options. I'm going to go to send to desktop create shortcut. And as we can see, we've now got the shortcut. Rather than going into the Neo Station folder, we can open it up from here, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is actually make this into a full screen mode. If I press Alt and enter on my keyboard together, there we go. If I then go to select folder as is asking us where our ROMs are located, that's going to open up a little explorer just here. So what I'm going to do is look for my ROMs folder, which is in my Neo Station folder, ROMs, and I'm going to highlight that and select folder found free systems with games. So it's picked up Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, and PlayStation. I'm gonna go to finish, and here we go. This is Neo Station. So as we can see, I've got my Mega Drive. If I left click on this one, here's my Mega Drive. And I'm also using my Xbox controller to navigate this. My D-pad is moving around. If I press A on Super Nintendo, here's my SNES games and the same for PlayStation. But this is looking pretty dull at the moment, so we're gonna need to add some artwork to this. If I use my RB button, 
I can then scroll across to go to retro achievements and also settings. I'm going to use the A button to go into scraper login. And this is where we need to put in our details for screen scraper, which is what I'm going to do right now. Once you typed in your username and password, go to login. Okay, so first of all, under screen scraper options, we're going to go down to systems by pressing D-pad, press A to come in. And as we can see, Mega Drive, PlayStation and Super Nintendo are all enabled. I'm going to press the B button to come out. I'm going to go to language next and make sure this is in my preferred language, which is English. I'm then going to go to scrape mode and I'm going to scrape everything. So I'm going to go down to all content and press A. We're then going to go to start and press A. And as we can see, it's now beginning to scrape my first game, which is Animaniacs. So we're going to wait for everything to scrape for now. Okay, excellent. As we can see, scraping has now been completed and we've got two games which has actually failed for whatever reason that is. If I press the B button on my Xbox controller and I'm going to press it again. I'm going to press LB on my controller a couple more times to come back over to games. If I then go to either all, I can scroll through my games just here. Each one of these have obviously now got artwork. If I press B to come out and specifically go into my Mega Drive folder, I can then scroll through my games and they should have preview videos too. And as we can see, just below play, it says Retro Achievements. We've not actually connected that yet, but that's entirely up to you. If you did want to connect it with Retro Achievements, then it will obviously say Connected. If I come out and into my Super Nintendo folder, here's my SNES games now with artwork and preview videos. And again, I'm gonna check out PlayStation and I've got two PlayStation games. And as we see, I've got a preview video. Okay, so let's actually look at playing one of these games. I'm gonna check out Mega Drive first. So I'm gonna check out one of these games. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna to go to Mega Swift and press the A button. And it's going to say Retro Watch not found. It says, please install RetroArch. So I'm going to go back over to the settings cog, go to directories, and I now need to set up RetroArch, which we've already installed pretty much with all the cores that we need. But we need to tell NeoStation where RetroArch is located. If I left click or use the A button on my Xbox controller, what we're going to do is point this in the direction of where RetroArch is installed. So it's in my NeoStation folder, it's in my emulators folder, RetroArch, and if I scroll down, I'm going to find RetroArch.exe, and here it is, double left click, and as we can see, that path has now been updated. If we open up a game this time round, it should play. So if I come out by pressing B, and head back over to my games, Mega Drive, and I'm going to open up Mega Swiv again. First of all though, I'm going to press down on my right analog stick, just to disable the sounds. And we can do that very easily to enable or disable. What I'm going to do then is open up Mega Swift by pressing the A button. Okay, this doesn't look great, so I need to quickly adjust the aspect ratio sizing for this game. I've pressed the FN button and the F1 button on my keyboard together to open up the RetroArch quick menu. From here, I'm going to just go down to core options. I'm going to go down to video by pressing A button and core provided aspect ratio. I'm going to set this one to 4x3. If I press B to come out, quick menu, resume. Okay, this time I'm going to shut down the game. As of right now, we don't actually have hotkeys within Neo Station, so what I'm going to do is close out of the game using the quick menu through RetroArch. I'm going to go down to close content, and I'm going to go down to quit. Okay, I'm next up going to try PlayStation. If I go down to Tekken 3 and press the A button, now it's going to say core not found and under technical details, it's telling us that we need a particular core through RetroArch to play this. If I come out of here, 
What I'm going to do from here is press the three horizontal lines on my Xbox controller and from here I can actually select a different core to use which I've downloaded. So I'm going to use Swan Station which I downloaded the core of earlier on in this video. If I press A to set as default and B to come out, if I go to play one of these games again I need to place BIOS files in the relevant folder. If I just come out of Neo Station for now by pressing Alt and Enter, I'm going to need to put my PlayStation BIOS files inside of the Neo Station, Emulators, RetroArch, and System folder. If I drag and drop the three BIOS files that I need to power PlayStation games, drag and drop. And now, if I head back over to Neo Station and just expand the window again, I'm going to check out Tekken 3. Round one, fight! <laughs> And PlayStation's working just fine. I'm going to use the FN and F1 button together on my keyboard to open up the RetroArch Quick menu. Just go to Close Content and down to Quit. And finally, I've got my Super Nintendo folder. So what I'm going to do is check out one of these games. I'm going to go for one of my favorites. And if we press that strange button on the Xbox controller, which has got two squares together, once we're inside of a folder, Neo Station will randomly select a game for us to play, if that's your type of thing. Now, if you're interested in the Cloud Sync option, which is fairly unique for Neo Station, just remember to head over to the tab at the top, Neo Sync, and enter your email and password just here. But more information about Neo Sync is on the Neo Station website, so do check that one out. And that's it for Neo Station today, so what do I personally think of it? I think it's very good with a lot of potential. It kind of reminds me of something like Emulation Station Desktop Edition. It's very lightweight, and it's not so heavy like retro bat do check out neo station it's fairly good and like i said i think this one's got some potential of getting somewhere in the future if you fancy learning more about retro watch i'm going to leave a link for a retro watch ultimate setup guide in my comment section and of course if you like today's video hit notifications and subscribe so you don't miss upcoming retro content here on my channel just jamie anyways again thanks for watching and until next time stay retro